Welcome to wisnotes.com mathematics video tutorials. Question 11a it reads the origin O00 forms part of the parallelogram OABC. The points A and B have position vectors 2, 6, and 8, 4 respectively, and M is a midpoint of OB. Make a sketch to show the position vectors of A and B. Then we have to determine the vector a b but to deduce the position vectors of c and m then we have to show using vectors that the diagonals o b and a c bisect each other and we have to show that the parallelogram is a square so the information that we are given is that the position vector of a is 2 6 now what that means is that the vector o a is 2 6 and if the position vector of b is 8 4 that means that the vector o b is 8 4 and then the coordinates of A would be 2 and 6 written in coordinate form and the coordinates of B would be 8, 4 written again in coordinate form. So let's go ahead and put the information in, in that we were given. We are given that the position vector of A is 2, 6. Hence, the vector OA is 2, 6. And similarly, the vector OB is 8, 4. Now what we can do is gonna put, we're gonna put that information on the graph. Alright, so let's bring in a frame for the graph first. So that's a frame from the graph. And what we are saying is that if O A is a position vector of the point A, then it means that A is situated uh, A would have coordinates two six. Two six. So A would be right here. And then B would have coordinates point B would have coordinates 8 4 because the position vector of B is 8 4 so the coordinates of B would be 8 4 so B would be situated 8 4 right here alright so we can go ahead and bring in where A would be A would be right here and B would be the point 8 4 right here and so we can also bring in the vector for OA. It is a vector that will take you from O to A. So that is it. That's vector OA. And then vector OB is a vector that will take you from O to B. So that is vector OB right there. So there we have our two vectors. Vector OA and vector OB. So that's what we have so far. Alright, then part B says now we have to determine, part 2 says determine the vector AB. Now that's a displacement vector, and that is basically the vector that we take from A to B. A to B. But what we can do is use a vector formula, displacement vector formula. And the displacement vector formula is written like this the displacement vector formula AB is equal to OB minus OA that is O times the last minus O times the first so what we're saying if that if the vector is AB then B is the last and A is the first so it's the position vector of the last which is B so that's OB minus the position vector of the first which is A so the position vector of the first would be OA so therefore vector AB is equal to O times the last minus O times the first the position vector of B minus the position vector of A and we know that OB from here is 8, 4 and minus OA vector OA is 2, 6 so that is 8 minus 2 equals 6 and 4 minus 6 equals negative 2 and you can see this 6, 2 on the diagram in terms of how you go from A to B, the displacement vector AB. So that would be to go from A to B would have to go 6 units to the right, that's 2, 4, 6, and then 2 units down, because that's a negative 2. 2 units down, so that's 2, 4, 6, and then 2 down, 2 down. So that will take you from A to B. And then we can show the vector AB on the diagram like that and that would be our vector AB and then 
that's the, that's the answer for for part b the vector a b is 6 negative 2 then we have to deduce the position vectors of o c of c and m now the position vector of c is o c that's all you go from o to c let's deal with o c first now since this is a parallelogram we have o a b c what we have so far are three points in the parallelogram three vertices and that's o a and b so since a parallelogram, we expect that C would be somewhere down here. And what happens is that in a parallelogram, we have two pairs of parallel sides, and the opposite sides of parallelogram are also equal in length, and they are also parallel. So therefore, what we know is that the length of OAB will be equal to the length of OC, and also the direction of AB will be equal to the direction of OC. So therefore, the vector OC is going to be equal to the vector AB because they are equal in direction and also equal in length. All right, so we can go ahead and put that information in. Let's write in that information. What we are saying is that in the parallelogram, AB is equal to OC in length and they are also parallel. And therefore, the vector OC will be equal to the vector AB, which we know from this part that that vector is 6, negative 2. Now, OC really is the position vector of C. All right, so what we have is that the position vector of C is actually OC and therefore the position vector of C is equal to 6 negative 2 so 6 negative 2 is the position vector of C because the position vector of C is vector OC and that's the answer for the, that part now let's put in the point C C would then be located at the C would be located at the point 6 negative 2 so that would be 6 negative 2 right here so we can go ahead and show where C would be right here 6 negative 2 and the vector OC would be this one alright vector OC that would be the vector OC parallel vector OC would be parallel to vector AB that would be vector OC it needs to be shifted around a bit okay so that would be our vector OC now we want the point M now what they're saying is that M is the midpoint of OB so if M is the midpoint of OB then it is halfway the length half the length of OB that is where M will be located so if this is 8 4 then half would be 4, 2. So therefore, m would be right here. But you can also do it in calculation. What we're saying is that m would be right there. But by calculation, you would have that the position vector of m, which would be om, OM is a position vector of M. OM. So based on this, it's going to be half of OB. Half the length, half of OB. So OM is equal to half of vector OB. So that will be half of 8, 4. Because vector OB is 8, 4. Right? And that would work down to 4, 2. So therefore, M would be position where the coordinates are 4, Two, that's right here for two right and that's the location of M all right right here location of M and the portion vector of M would be for two now the next question said that we are to show that the diagonals bisect each other all right so let's put in the diagonal the diagonals the diagonal one diagonal AC would be this one that would be the diagonal AC and we already have the diagonal OB so to show 
let's put in also the other side of the parallelogram and the fourth side of the parallelogram would be that side alright so there's our parallelogram now what they're saying is that we have to show that the diagonals bisect each other so if they bisect each other then what it means is that they have the same midpoint so it means that the midpoint of a c would be at the same point where the midpoint of OB is. We already know that the midpoint of OB is M. So we need to prove that the midpoint of AC is also M. Alright, so let's show that information. Alright, and we put it in one move. Let's put that information in one move. So what we're explaining is that if the midpoint of both diagonals are equal then they bisect one another we already know that the midpoint of OB is M and we therefore need to show that the midpoint of AC is also M let us for now let the midpoint of AC be, M, be N now if the midpoint of AC is N using the midpoint formula for vectors the position vector of N which would give you the location of N would be equal to half the sum of the position vectors of the endpoint AC so that is half of OA plus AC because we want the midpoint of AC so that's half of OA plus OC and that, that is ON would be half of 2, two 6 which is the position vector of A 2, 6 plus the position vector of C which is 6 negative 2 position vector of C is 6 negative 2 and that would reduce to 4 2 which also is the position vector of M so therefore M and N is the same point and we have therefore proof that the diagonals bisect each other because they have the same midpoint they each cut the other in half last question says that we have to show that the parallelogram is a square now what are the properties of a square properties of a square is that the diagonals of a square are equal in length and they are perpendicular to each other that's the properties of a square a square such that the diagonals are equal in length and they also bisect each other so we have to prove that properties of a square exist in this parallelogram and if that is the case then we have a square so let's look at the working out for that what we are saying is that if OABC is a square then the diagonals OB if OABC is a square, then the diagonals OB and AC are equal in magnitude length. We're doing vectors, length in magnitude is magnitude, and are perpendicular bisectors of each other. Perpendicular bisectors mean that they're perpendicular to each other and also bisect each other. Now for OB, the magnitude of OB is given by OB squared using Pythagoras' theorem. OB squared will be equal to 8 squared plus 4 squared. Right? That's this one. This length will be that, that that forms a right angle triangle here. And what we are gonna say is that this length squared is equal to this length squared plus that length squared. And that is what we have. That works out to 80. And the gradient of O B, which is the slope of A B, that's rise over run. So rise over run to go from O to B. The rise is four and the run is 8 therefore the gradient of OB is 4 divided by 8 which is 0 0.5 now for AC the magnitude of AC right where is AC AC so the magnitude of AC we know AC has 4 units across here and 8 units down 4 units across and 8 units down so that's a right angle triangle again so using Pythagoras' theorem then the magnitude of AC squared will be equal to 4 units squared plus 8 units squared and that again works out to 80 that's the length of AC and the gradient of AC now 
again is rise over run so to go from a to c the rise is a negative 8 because you're going down negative 8 divided by the run is 4 units so to go from a to c you'd have to rise negative 8 down negative 8 the rise would be negative 8 and the run would be 4 so that's negative 8 divided by 4 so therefore the gradient is negative 2 and since the product of the gradient is equal to negative 1 the product of these two gradients that's a half a half multiplied by negative 2 is negative 1 it means that the diagonals OB is perpendicular to AC and we already saw that OB and o and AC bisect each other and they are equal in length they are equal in length alright so if they bisect each other and they are equal in length and they are also perpendicular to each other then it means that the diagonals make the parallelogram a square because it satisfies the properties of they satisfy the properties of a of a square which is that the diagonals bisect each other they are perpendicular and they are equal in length hence OABC is a square okay thanks again for visiting wisnotes.com come again for more solutions thank you